Hello everyone, welcome to a Rhino Rebuild of Visa Cargo. Now we're over here uh, in the designer. I've set up a little bit of a gantry to uh, get this whole design going. Uh, so I basically, there's a lot of things about the Rhino that I want to change. One of which is the whole bottom chassis. It needs to be completely reworked. Uh, I want one more space vertical for internals and I want uh, two more horizontal space for internals. So I've gone ahead and I've measured out how wide I want the tracks to be and how wide I want the inside to be and we're just going to go through uh, and start redoing this now channel's been a little light on uploads this week because I had uh, four vehicles that I was uh, working on this is uh, this is one of them here is the Rhino rebuild and two of those vehicles uh, had to be scrapped because they just uh, they just weren't working out they're going to need to be completely uh, completely redesigned. The third vehicle uh, is having some struggles, but I think I'll be able to get it functional. The footage I have from that one is just not really usable because it's had to change size and shape so many times. Uh, but we'll, we'll, we'll get a teaser of that vehicle later on in this. For now, we're rebuilding the Rhino here. So, what are the problems with the Rhino? Aside from... Uh, the problems I've already mentioned um, with the uh, chassis specifically of the Rhino. The, there are other problems. Namely, uh, I thought the volume limit was 2,000 when I built the Rhino. So it, the Rhino itself is sitting at about 840. So we've got a couple... We've got about 700 more that we can uh, work with pretty easily to just make a better version of it. And on top of that, we need to uh, up the size of the weapons. So... The Dustwind Gypsies are not very heavily armored uh, at all, so that's not too much of a concern. However, beyond the Dustwind Gypsies, people are going to have, or factions are going to have uh, proper defensive schemes. So I wanted to uh, redo my whole offensive setup for the Rhino in a, in a larger, more elite craft. I also have nothing that's good against something like the Lightning Hoods with their lasers. So this thing is also going to have either smoke or shields, or maybe both. When it comes to weapons, the simple 150 casemates, uh, I've actually really enjoyed using them, but I don't think they're going to be good enough going forward. So we are going to switch this one to having its own APS. In particular, I I've been toying around with the idea of trying to swap shells based on the target that I'm facing. So I want this thing to have a secondary gun that fires, like smoky mp so uh, it has it'll, it'll have like two guns a primary gun and a secondary gun and the secondary gun will be firing this disable shell so if it's going up against the lightning hoods it'll be firing smoky mp it'll shut down their lasers or laser munition defense and it'll do a little a bit of emp damage and it'll just enable uh, the craft to take that fight a lot better whereas if i'm going up against something like an air unit I might be able to switch it over to something like a flak frag shell to shoot it out of the sky. So I like the idea of, of setting up some versatility uh, in the unit that way. Now, I don't necessarily know how well that's going to work. The, uh, the tread sizes here, the new variant uh, looks a lot smaller, but it's actually two wider and four longer. It's just lower to the ground, so it looks smaller, but it is actually uh, notably larger. So I, I have to highly recommend this, uh, this gantry method that I've been using uh, to, to do specific things. You do end up going back a little bit and fiddling around with the gantry itself instead of just the craft. But it lets you see what you're working with uh, in a different way that you just normally don't get to see. And especially, like, the whole purpose of this was to rebuild the rhino. Having a rhino sitting right there, being able to constantly look back to it, uh, or copy stuff and prefabs, things of that nature. Uh, it was all very useful. One thing you might notice, uh, I've got ammo boxes uh, in the tracks, uh, and even directly next to some of these wheels. So yes, if they explode, they will technically damage the wheels. No, I'm not concerned about it. Uh, the wheels are the most durable thing on the craft, and more likely, something will destroy all the metal beams before it destroys the wheels. The reason I've shoved ammo in here is quite simple. Uh, I don't 
want to have the ammo stockpiled anywhere else. If it if it's gonna be somewhere, I would rather that it be spaced out uh, in a solid block of metal that's very far away from all the other internals of the craft uh, than I would, you know, just put an armored compartment somewhere. Now, I'm leaving these two spots open here at the back for uh, just AI and detection. And here I'm just going through looking at how many wheels and the actual configuration of it, deciding if I'm happy with it. All in all, I'm quite happy with how the base has turned out. Uh, it's substantially more durable with actual amounts of armor, uh, and it already has some spaced out resource storage in the form of its ammo boxes. It has plenty of space for the internals, much more than the original Rhino did, which is good because I want to put a full fuel engine on this thing, and I want to have uh, at least shields and maybe smoke. I'm going to do a little bit more work on the chassis, and then I'm going to start on the turret, and then we'll be back. Okay, and further into the future than I was intending, we've <laughs> ended up uh, almost completing the trike. Now, why did we skip this far ahead? Uh, basically, uh, I had to rebuild the turret about 69 times, and the footage from that was not ideal. It was basically uh, me inside the turret with everything on shrink mirror, uh, destroying and replacing blocks, and it kind of just looked like this. Uh, it looked pretty much exactly like this for like four hours straight. So that's what that footage looked like. Now, originally we had the idea of two separate types of guns. We had the idea of a small secondary gun that was going to fire faster and be used for either anti-air uh, or some sort of support utility thing. Uh, I still really like that idea. The problem is I just didn't have the space constraint on this craft. We're already at 2,499 volume, which is of course uh, basically the limit so we've ended up going for two guns that are basically the same. We do uh, we are self-sufficient when it comes to AI. We have a big ass engine that gives us about two and a half thousand power, and we've got three sub vehicle spawners uh, on the craft. Now, because it is AI independent, it doesn't need to carry one of the scouting vehicles with it. So hopefully, it can carry with it a few useful damage dealing drones, perhaps fighters, perhaps bombers. I have been working on a bomber. We'll show that out. I'll show that off in, in a little while. But, uh, yeah. All things considered, I have to say, I, I've decided to name this the Triceratops, or the Trike for short. Um, I'm not I'm, I'm not done with the cosmetics of it, but uh, basically, uh, I was working on four vehicles, and the videos for the other three are just not going to be out. Uh, two of those vehicles have basically been scrapped completely, along with their videos, and the third one is uh, an APS bomber that needs to be completely rebuilt. So that, that video uh, is also probably not going to come out because there's there's not a there's not a nice build video for it. Uh, there's just not going to be. But uh, yeah, you may have noticed that I'm not using old blocks for the turret, the the torso armor. Uh, I'm actually using beams and slopes where I can. And that has to do with the fact that these blocks, uh, despite taking up the same literal space, uh, are actually not full blocks, and therefore they don't give you full volume. So when I initially finished this turret, we were just a little bit over, uh, and in order to get the trike head on there without being over the volume limit, we had to replace a lot of the armor blocks that were beams with uh, not beams, and we had to shrink the armoring down a little bit. So the entire torso is now covered in heavy armor, instead of metal, and it's covered in not full heavy armor blocks, so that uh, we save as much volume as we can on that. Shield on the front is a strength 10 shield. It's got to be said. Uh, it covers most of the craft. It's a little hard to see, but it's a strength 10 shield. We don't have any smoke on this. Uh, that shield is mounted on the turret, so it points wherever the, the torso is pointing. But yeah, I, I like how this thing is self-sufficient when it comes to AI. It doesn't need a spotting vehicle for it. Uh, I'm very excited about that because that was kind of, a, kind of a bit of a problem uh, with the Rhino. It hasn't happened yet, but I could imagine the scout vehicle going down in enemy territory and then the Rhino being next to helpless. As far as these guns, these are 333 millimeter auto cannons. One gunpowder, one frag, one hesh. Head is uh, currently their setup. This can be fired out of a one millimeter, uh, one millimeter, one meter auto loader. Quite a lot of damage for quite a small shell. It's pretty cheap on the old ammo, and these things have good fire rate. 
So overall, I'm, uh, I'm actually very happy with these guns. And I'm very happy with this craft in general. Uh, it's also worth noting that the Triceratops here is uh, about 19,000 materials more expensive than the Rhino. With that said, let's go and take a look at this, uh, I'd call it a bomber, uh, this flying, flying abomination. Now what you're looking at is just a chassis. Uh, this thing is going to be too large. It's already starting to come up on the volume limit, so I need to redo everything except for the gun. But uh, it serves as a stable test platform for the gun. I was fiddling around with the idea of rail guns for the Triceratops. And what I noticed is, if you don't use gunpowder in the shell, there's actually no barrel cooldown. Which kind of kind of blew my mind. I figured there'd be some barrel cooldown. Surely there'd be, there'd be any. But it turns out, no. No, there's actually no barrel cooldown. There's only barrel cooldown if you actually use gunpowder. Now, what does this mean? Well, it means if you're using a railgun and you're firing low velocity shells, you, you actually just need enough energy in your magnets to fire all the shells that you're holding. So if they're only using like 100 or 200 rail draw, you get to do this. Let's, let's get a better camera angle. This is 68 333 millimeter shots fired in like a quarter of a second. <laughs> I, I didn't know this was possible. But uh, I, this is amazing. This is this is what I've come up with for my bomber. It's capable of punching a hole straight through the mule and one-shotting it. Uh, the mule is the tankiest thing that I'm uh, uh, tankiest design that I've allowed myself to test against so far. So I'm quite happy. All in all, I think the gun's a little bit overkill, and I think it's part of the reason why this thing ends up so big. So the gun needs to shrink down. This is chassis number three, by the way. I, I tried three other general shapes of the plane before I tried out this one. Uh, and I think I need to, to, to drop the gun by a, a whole one radius of turret size and then uh, and then I'll come back and make a, a much smaller, more cost efficient version of this. But yeah, this is, uh, I've discovered that you can in fact make an APS bomber. <laughs> it just, it stores up shells and then it, it just has enough energy and its magnets to fire all of the shells uh, in one burst so let's go ahead and just another another test of this thing because it is majestic um it of course fired uh, completely through the the mule it can go through it can go through so much i'm very happy with how this is functioning uh and i'm including it in this video because it's not going to get its own build video uh, i i was going to but it's been rebuilt three times and it needs to be rebuilt again so it's it's changed uh, too drastically for me to just do one video on it. But yeah, that's uh, that's the APS bomber that I'm working on uh, in the background. I'm very, very happy with its damage output. It currently has a reload of about 55 seconds, which is not ideal. But, <laughs> but uh, yeah. Anyway, that's, uh, that's about all I've got for you. I know the videos have been a little bit light, but as I mentioned, I had to scrap... Uh, two other videos, and that third bomber video is uh, is also good. the video itself is going to be scrapped, uh, even though we'll see that craft hopefully once it's finished. Uh, yeah, we're gonna do one more episode on the the Dustwind Gypsies, giving people time to submit their viewer craft submissions. Uh, links to the Steam Workshop are very much appreciated. Uh, I've had someone wanted to post the the actual game file. Uh, please don't up upload sketchy FTD game files. Uh, I understand that it's it's like probably safe, but just use the Steam Workshop. Uh, Steam Workshop is very useful and uh, it also means that I can include the link to the Steam Workshop uh, page in the description. I also can't include them in the description of the video. So yes, uh, please do. If you do submit something, use the Steam Workshop link. If you missed the, uh, the viewer craft submission uh, discussion, that was in the previous campaign video. I'm not gonna go over it again. But yeah, you can expect one more campaign video on the Dustwind Gypsies before we start taking view viewer craft uh, into the mix. We've already got one thing submitted so far. It is a pretty, pretty beautiful looking uh, cram ram tank. Uh, I'm not sure if it's designed to ram yet, but it's got rams on it. It looks like it's going to get up close and personal. And uh, I'm hoping, I'm actually looking forward to using it against the White Flares. Anyway, I've been Sicargo, this has been fun, and I'll see you soon with more From the Depths.